Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,372. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic 1,372 start or the finished file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have a data set here, and our goal is for each name to get the total amount and bring it back over here. So for PIP, we need to go down to total, get that 15, bring it back right here. Now, we have five examples here, some formulas and a Power Query example. Now, our first formula comes from Dean Bailiff at YouTube. And it's pretty straightforward. We're going to look up Bill. And notice, the total is two rows down. Total is two rows down. Total is two rows down. So that's the pattern we recognize. So we can simply, with the match function, look up each one of the names. That'll give us the position in this list. And then we'll add two. Just to see how match works, we're going to use the match function, lookup value, that's the particular name as a relative cell reference, comma, lookup array, that's this entire range right here. We're going to hit the F4 key to lock it, comma. We're doing exact match because this isn't necessarily sorted, so I'm going to use a zero for exact match. Close parentheses. Control Enter. And let's just see how this works if I double click and send it down. One. For bore, it's 7. So that's perfect. Now we simply need to add 2 to each one of these. Now notice, I copy this down. Active cell at the top, I'm going to hit the F2 key to put the top cell in edit mode. Now I'm simply going to add 2 to it to get the correct position for each employee's total. Now, edited formula at the top. To populate it all the way down the highlighted column, I hold Control and Enter. That's the relative position we can use inside of the index function. F2 in the active cell, come right after the equal sign, type index and tab. Now, the array and index are the actual potential items we want to go and look up. So I highlight that range right there, hit the F4 key, and type a comma. Now, notice array, those are the potential items. But look at the next argument. It says, hey, what's the row number? or relative position, 3, 6, and so on. That will be perfect. Come to the end. So that whole match plus 2 is going to give us the relative position. Close parenthesis at the end, Control Enter to populate the formula all the way down. And boom, there are the totals for each one of the names given. Now, certainly, if the pattern is always 2 below, this is going to be a pretty straightforward formula. But what if we have this situation down here? We definitely have the name and total, name and total, but it's not always two down. Well, really, what would make this easy is if these empty cells actually had the name in there. Well, there's an easy way to amend this column. I'm going to highlight the whole column. And I need to highlight all of the empty cells. Now we're going to use the Go To feature. So I'm going to use the F5 key to open up Go To. What Go To does is there are various ways in this dialog box to go to certain elements or things inside of Excel. What we want is not a particular reference or name. I want to click Special. And lo and behold, there's blanks. Now let me show you the other way to get to Go To Special. Home over to editing, find and select. And look at that. Here there's a go to special. Anyway, you get to this. Now we click blank. What we're telling this feature is please go to and highlight all of the blanks. So when I click OK, that's pretty magic. Now notice there's an active cell right there. And for every cell that's highlighted, I want a formula that always looks one cell above. Notice right here it would look to Bill. But once that's filled in, if this was looking one cell above, it would be looking at Bill. So in the active cell, I say equal sign, up arrow to get a relative cell reference, one above. And now to populate all of the cells in the go to special blank range, I hold Control and Enter. Notice we use Control Enter to populate a particular range a couple different times already. 
But now we have a simple task of finding bill in total, pip in total. So in essence, we're going to look up or add from this column with two conditions. Now, because there are no duplicates, there's only one record with pip in total, really the easiest way is going to use the sum ifs as a lookup function when there are no duplicates. The sum range, it's kind of a misnomer there because it's never going to get more than one number. But nevertheless, that's the range with the values we want to go and add or look up. F4 to lock that range, comma. Criteria range 1, there's all of the names. F4 to lock it, comma. The criteria for that whole range is a relative cell reference, the particular name, comma. Criteria range 2, that's this column with the criteria like rural, town, suburb, and our total. F4 to lock it, comma. And then because of this condition or the criteria, is not going to change. I'm going to hard code it into my formula. Since it's text, we have to put it in double quotes. Total and double quote. And that formula will do it. Close parentheses, sum ifs to add, but we're only ever going to get one item. Double click and send it down. Now, another way we could do this, and this is going to start getting into the esoteric range, is I want to create a helper column that sort of does what our go to special blanks equal sign control enter did to fill in the column. But here, what we're going to have is bill, bill, bill. But in our formula, we're going to have bills all the ways and then pips all the ways. And we're going to join it to the cell over here. So in essence, we'll have both conditions or criteria in a single cell. Now, the formula concept we're going to use at the heart of this formula is I need to look at this column here. And as I copy the formula down, I always need to find the last text item. So notice if the range is expanding as I go down, when I get down to here, I need to look at the last text item. That's not text. That's not text. But as soon as I pass this row, that becomes the last text item in an expandable range. So here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to use the isText function. And I'm going to click on B39, type a colon to get the second B39 of our expandable range, close parentheses. And I very carefully need to click in the first B39 and lock it with the F4 key. That's locked, but that's not. So as I copy down, that B39 will turn B40, B41, and so on. Now I'm going to enter this. This is just an incomplete formula. But let's copy this down. And I want to go look at what happens. So for example, in this cell, if I hit F2 and then F9 to evaluate it, it's an expandable range that's saying, true, there's text. False, false, there's no text. Now down here, notice if the range is expanding down to pip when I F2 and then F9 to evaluate it, there's the true for bill, false, false for the empties. But there's the first true for pip. So that expandable range looking at text is the inside part of this formula. Now, I always need to get the last one. Because notice, as I'm copying the formula down right here, F9, if I say get the last true, it would be looking at bill. So this cell will be filled with bill. Down here, F2, F9, because there's two falses, it'll still get bill. So we're going to have a lookup formula that always finds the last true, which represents the last text item. Now I'm going to go to the top cell. F2, and I want to, as a numerator, after the equal sign type, a 1 divided by, and let's enter this, Control Enter, and double click and send it down. Right here in this cell, F2, F9, that's the array that's going to help us get at the last text item. Positionally, that 1 says 1, 2, 3, 4. Last text item is, as we're copying it down, that pip. Notice, for the first three items, the last text item is in position 1. Bill, bill, bill. Escape. Now, F2, we're going to put that array that will help us find the position of the last text item into the amazing lookup function. 
Now, lookup is the original lookup function way before VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. Now, lookup only does approximate match, but that's going to help us here because we're going to put as a lookup value some number that's bigger than anything in the array it's trying to match. So I'm going to put 2 there, comma. Now, we're using the first option for lookup function. The lookup vector, that tells lookup function the position. So 2 will find wherever the last one is and report the position to lookup. Then we comma. And the result vector is going to be our expandable range. Watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this in edit mode and paste it right here of the actual names. So result vector will always take the position from the combination of the first two arguments, and then lookup will find it here and deliver it to the cell. So you ready? Close parentheses. And guess what? I don't have to enter this array formula because we're making an array operation there. That argument's expecting a single item, and we gave it a bunch. We also did one divided by an array. So this is an array formula, but because we're using lookup, which is one of the few functions that understand how to calculate array formulas without any special keystroke, we don't have to use a special keystroke. We can hit Enter or Control Enter or whatever we want. Now I'm going to double click and send it down and look at that. Instead of doing the go to blanks like we did, we have a formula that fills. Now I've copied this formula down, active cell at the top. I hit F2 and I need to join that ampersand to whatever's in C39. So I click in C38, down arrow. And now I'm going to populate this edited formula all the way down with Control Enter. And look at that. Bill total, PIP total. In a single cell, we have both conditions. Now we can come over here. And this is the first column. This is the fourth column. So I can use equals VLOOKUP. Lookup value, I need both conditions joined together. So relative cell reference join symbol to join in double quotes total. Now, that text does not have to be the same case as the total here. Excel is not case sensitive. And double quote, comma, the table array. There's the first column. All the way over to the fourth column, I hit the F4 key to lock it, comma. Column index, one, two, three. The fourth column has the thing I want to go and get, so I tell VLOOKUP with a 4. And comma, this is not sorted, so we use exact match, either false or 0. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. So that will work also. Now, if we scroll down here, this is an insane array formula that I'm not even going to go through in this video. If you want to come download the workbook and look at it, that's fine. If you have a shorter, better formula, I would love to see it. I'm going to click Escape. Now, Power Query. Power Query and our second example where we did go to blanks really are probably the easiest solution amongst all of these. Now, the one thing about Power Query is your data has to be an official Excel table. Now, I already clicked in a single cell, went up to Insert table, and then I made sure to go to design and name it up here. So there's the name of our table. Now, once we have it as an Excel table, let's go to data. I'm using Excel 2016, so Power Query is the get and transform group. If you're in 2013 or 10, you actually have to search Google and download it, and it's it. And it has its own tab called Power Query. I'm going to click from table to bring it into the editor. There's the name from the table in the Excel spreadsheet. I do not want to keep this name. I want to name the query. This will also be the official name of the table, which is our report output. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to call it something like totals report and enter. Now, here's our data set. And the first thing I want to do is simulate what we did over in Excel. I want to fill down all of the blanks with whatever's right above. So we go over to the Transform tab. There's the Fill Down. And look at that. Instantly, we have all of our names. Now I'm going to come to Category Total column, click the drop down, and we're going to filter out every row except for the total row. Uncheck Select All. 
click Total, click OK. That is pretty quick and easy. Now, I don't want this column, so I right click Remove. And that will do it. There's our name. There's our steps. Now we can come to Home, Close and Load to. I want it as a table on the existing sheet. Click the Collapse button, and I'm going to try and put it in F74. Click OK. Now we can click Load. And just like that, there is our report. Now, this is Power Query. If we have data change, if we were doing this formula over here, for example, if the data changed, like say this was 4 and then this became 9, well, the formula would automatically update. One thing that this formula will not take into consideration is if any records are added to the bottom. Now I'm going to Control Z, Z, keep it like that. Power Query, on the other hand, if I were to change a number, like let's change this to 4 and then this to 9, when I hit Enter, it does not automatically update. You have to come over to the Power Query output, right click, refresh, and then it would work. Now I'm going to Control Z, 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 Z. However, if you added anything to the bottom, like H, I, P, tab, and then added 5, and then I'm going to hit tab to add a new row to the table, type total tab, and then of course this would be 5. So I've added this to the bottom. Now Power Query, when I right click, refresh over here, instantly it incorporates it. So in that sense, Power Query is the most updatable. It'll take change data or data added to the bottom of the data set. Now, actually, there is one other way we could do this. For example, notice here we filled the column using go to special blanks. Even down here with this lookup without that, we actually filled the column in both cases. But notice, if it's true that this column always has the individual amounts, then the total, individual amounts, then the total, we can use an old accounting trick. We can simply say equals sum ifs. The sum range will be all of these, F4, comma, criteria range, just the names, F4 to lock it, comma. And all we'll do is take a single condition or criteria, because everything's doubled. When I close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down, that's almost it. F2 in the active cell, simply divide by 2. Control Enter to populate this all the way down, and there we get the same amount. All right, so that was a little fun with Power Query and an insane array formula we skipped over. Our lookup last text helper column and VLOOKUP, some ifs with two conditions, but might as well keep it simple and do that. And then we started off with Deem Bailiff's formula, index and match when you have a set pattern total is always two rows below. All right, great hanging out on our online Excel team. We'll see you next video.